participants. Today we are going to see about personality development and I request the participants uh, to log in to our website. ஆட்டோமேட்டிக்காக 
இப்போ பாஸ்போர்ட்டை கேட்க பாஸ்போர்ட் கேட்காது So, good day participants. Today's session, uh, I request the participants to go to menti.com and use the code 827296. I repeat, now I request the participant to log on to menti.com and use the code 827296. so this is this is a workshop so we will be having an interactive session so when i am asking you questions you will be pulling your answers in this website so before we move on to the session i request the participants to go to menti.com and enter the code 827296 for requesting the polling from whatever activity that i am giving during the session so this is a website that you will be logging on participants i re- i request you to please log on to a web page menti.com for posting the polls quizzes that i will be handling during the presentation so since it is a workshop i need your cooperation to answer the questions properly so in order to access please go to meti.com and enter 827296 and the session will be starting soon
So participants, if you have uh, entered So before going on to the session, uh, one second. So let's move on to the session. Good day, dear participants. How are you all? So this workshop is on personality development, unlearn to learn the skills. Today, session will be mostly on personality, the influence of behavior, cash model, activity, quiz, tasks, enterprising assessments. So here we are not going to just go on to the PPT explanation and so on. You'll be having um, videos and in between you'll be having few activities that you have to do through meety.com. So I request the participants to once again go and uh, log on to menti.com and enter the password 827-296. So now uh, our first presentation is on how you can unlearn. So, what exactly is personality? Personality is the art. I'm sorry, the video has been uh, paused. What exactly is personality? We have very often heard saying he or she has a good personality or what a personality he or she has. The personality is the typical person of thinking, feeling and behavior that makes a person unique. When you say that someone is a good personality, we mean that they are quite interesting and a reason to be with. Everyone wants to be attractive to others. To that end, having a good personality is vital, probably even more good in idea. According to Dale Carnegie, 85% of success of happiness will be the result of how you will interact with others. Ultimately, people determine how attracted you are or shy away from you. So now let us go to the influence of behavior. The School of Psychology has a theory which teaches us that when we are born, we are born on a clean seat and as we grow, we are put into a framework of religion, science, the law and the culture among other aspects which now form our habits, our boundaries and the values. So we end up being in the projected environments this is in the family aspect of side in large. This could enable good and bad behavior. 
Now let us see a video of how parents influence a child's behavior towards the society. What are you accusing me of? Nothing. What are you accusing me of? Why don't you say it to my face? What are you talking about? Why don't about? you ever think about my problem? Just lower your voice. Lower my voice? She said you wouldn't yell in front of the baby. baby. It's no. always the baby. What about me? I live here too. This is my house too. I work very, very hard to pay the bills. No, you don't. The minute I earn it, you go out. Come on, let's go get some food. Okay, Dad. This is the second video. Time for family worship. Get your book and pick up all these marbles. Someone could get hurt. <sighs> Always listen to mommy and daddy. Thank you. I'm so proud of you for obeying. Now, let's... So, what did you see in these two videos? The first video showed that a parent's both is fighting and that behavior, that's a bad behavior that influenced the child from childhood. So it will be carried on to generation from him to his son and next generation. And in the second video, you saw a father, how he treated his son towards a positive attitude. So that shows that the child will grow with positive attitude and good knowledge. Now let us see what about the topic. Unlearn, learn and relearn. So unlearn, shed of negatives. Why we should share of negatives? Here, we insist on the concept unlearn, that is, shed negatives. You may wonder why ha have I used the image coronavirus has made us learn to unlearn. Yes, many negative habits like eating foods outside a home, greeting with a shake hand, roaming, what we thought good has turned out to be negative. Learn to change, like to adapt, and spent with our family to be clean and eat. Eat healthy foods or home cooked foods help us to realize even technology can be used only for a short while. Buy things that are only needed, not to show our status and what not. Relearn that traditional medicines, eating habits are the need of the hour. The cash box of performance coaching tool introduced by David Hedlinger to illustrate the poor performance is not just lack of knowledge or skill, but also poor attitudes and bad habits. Cash, it's actually pronounced as cash, is an acronym for knowledge, abilities, skills, and habits. Knowledge denotes the cognitive and mental abilities used to retain and process information. Attitude is a feeling or emotion that a person has towards someone or something. Skill denotes both the 
physical and mental ability to perform tasks. Habits is the repeated and consistent behavior of a person. The configuration of cash box helps delineate between training issue and performance issue. Knowledge and skills are generally considered the learning and training concept of an individual, while attitude and habits are the performance attributes of a person. So let us move on to the activity. So why this activity? Take a look at these one syllable words that may look like nonsense but if you say these words out loud over and over again faster and faster something strange happens to, to the two sides of your brain start working together the, these are the logical words which begin to make up common phrases go ahead give it a try say the words out over and over and see if you can guess the phrase so, did you find out? Akik can talk ants. So, what will be the answer for this? So, now go on to meety.com, enter the password 82726 and post your answer. So I am receiving answers from 19 participants so far. I hope so. Others will also answer. I am getting different answers rather than the question. Please participants, please give your answers according to the sentence which I gave you. Dear participants, I'm waiting for your answer. So this is the sentence, Ek hik can talk ants. What will be the answer? So the answer is, a kick in top of ants. Did you guess? as a kick in the pants. Now, you have got an idea. Let's work both sides of your brains. Play along and let us see whether you can come up with the correct answer or the phrase. So let's pull up the first sentence. Abby Lane, kiss Jair. So go to the poll and answer the question. Time up. So I'm expecting more response from the participant side. Only 21 people are answering. So, only 22 respondents have given the answer. Just try a blank kiss there. What will be the syllable word? Just try. So, 23 participants have registered. I'm expecting more. Come on, try. Just give it a try. So fine, we'll check what is the answer. So a plain kiss there, when you say it fast, it is pronounced as a blank stare. So fine, what has happened here? So now the process between your left brain, and, sorry, your left brain and your right brain are working. Exactly, it is happening. The left hemisphere is dominant in processing the words that you see and hear. The right hemisphere plays an important role in interesting or interpreting their meaning. When they are strong 
true to make sentences and when the two hemisphere are working together it is like a light bulb going boom into your head and the answer seems to come out of nowhere skill skill it is a very important factor and let me show its importance through a video when it comes to work skills they can be broken down into two types hard skills and soft skills they're pretty different from one another but both are necessary to be successful on the job let's take a look at the differences between the two hard skills are concrete skills that are specific to your job and are required for you to actually do your work for example if you're a chef cooking would be a hard skill or if you're a computer programmer coding would be an example Soft skills, on the other hand, are interpersonal or people skills that can be used in every job. These include communication, teamwork, and adaptability. Hard skills are generally learned through school, training, or previous work experience. They're more objective, meaning that once you've learned the information or task, you would then possess that skill. Soft skills are more difficult to develop. You'll need to practice them over time in the real world with others. They come naturally to some people, while others may not have such an easy time with them. Hard skills are easy to measure. Employers can get a good idea of your hard skills by looking at your education, previous experience, and certifications. Soft skills are harder to evaluate. They can't really be communicated well through your cover letter or resume. Instead, employers usually have to wait until an interview or your first few weeks on the job to get a good idea of your soft skills. Despite their differences, you'll need both hard and soft skills if you want to become more hireable or be successful in your current job. So now we have seen what is hard skill and soft skill. Let's move on to a quiz. So for this quiz, you'll be going to meti.com and uh, there's a different number. First, let me pose a question. If you are in a running race and if you are going to pass the second person, what place are you in? Now go on to meti.com. But this time you'll give a password. One, three, nine, one seven. I repeat, participants, please go and log in to miti.com and give in the number one three nine one seven. One three nine one seven. So now post your answers. What place are you in? May I repeat the question? Okay. If you are in a running, if you are in a running race to pass, and if you are going to pass the second person, which place are you in? So I have received uh, one answer. Okay. Fine. So I am receiving a lot of interesting answer. Six people have answered. Okay. I'll give you time, two more minutes. Third place, second place, first place. Okay. That's a good answer. Okay, fine. So let's move on and see what the answer is. What place are you in? And the answer is second place. Did you get that? I admit that these questions are framed to test your common sense, but you can also call them trick questions. So you have to pay really close attention and harness your common sense to get the right answer. Think you have got what it takes. So now let's move on to the second quiz. You are driving a bus with 10 people on it. 
at the first stop four people get off and two get on to the next stop three people get off and five get on and at the last stop six people get off and only one get out so let's see what's question is how old is bus driver so i hope so you have got the answer go to meeti.com and please post your answer i'll repeat the question you are driving bus with 10 people on it at the first stop four people get off and two get on to the next stop three people get off and five get on at the last stop six people get off and only one gets on ready pull your answers so i have received uh, one answer so it is second okay that's a good answer only two participants have polled okay fine i'm receiving numbers great so i hope so everyone has got the answer so now let me reveal the answer the answer is you are driving the bus so this was meant to reveal how your brain trains fast for efficiency when you are presented with a problem your brain is naturally wired to use mentally shortcuts to save time and energy these shortcuts allows your brain to answer quickly with confidence the problem is answering based on past experiences using what we call common sense is open to possibility that you are in a incorrect or especially if your information is faulty or incorrect so this uh, is a video about attitude since we are going along with cash model i have given you this video may a few have already seen it but anyhow let's see what happens here you are in the wrong place sorry i thought you were an interviewer sorry are you here for an interview yep take a marker and write something on the board sit down i can't do it tell me something about yourself well you have my resume in your hand i expect you to have gone through it i'll tell you something that's not there i like pani puri not masal puri <laughs> well you have less marks in academics why i didn't like sitting in the classrooms and listening to boring lectures and i hate remembering some data and writing exams we have storage devices for that you have done project alone why i pitched my idea to the project panel they said you're crazy and rejected it i told them rather argued with them saying you don't have brains to understand my idea they said if you think you're a genius we'll approve it do it let's see after this nobody wanted to join me for the project so you did it alone and completed it yes but it took me 2 years extra that's why i took 6 years to do engineering i'm okay with it if you want me to give you this job then you got to take off your funky style dress put on formals comb the hair and those earrings should go <laughs> that's a good suggestion but i'll keep my style is it more important than your career no but a career without being myself <laughs> is not important you're in thank you so now we are understood a little bit what attitude is everything so let me go on to the task i'm going to give you a list of tasks one at a time 
simply follow my instruction start each new task as i say it don't it doesn't matter if you complete the task just keep going until i tell you to start a new one got it here we go clap your hands just try it be a child again so now clap your hands count out loud from 1 to 10 put your hands on your head cluck like a chicken or bark like a dog snap your fingers ha <laughs> so i hope to you everyone who have done it besides feeling little silly right now you probably had no problem following the directions i hope so everyone would have done what i said so let's go to answer the poll now so for this activity uh, in meti.com you will be entering the number 54776 i repeat it you'll be going to meti.com and you'll be entering the number as 54776 Okay. So here's the question. What was the third thing I asked you to do? I repeat, what was the third thing I asked you to do? Let's see who's giving the correct answer now. Participants, if you have not logged on the password i repeat it again go on to meti.com and give the password as 54776 waiting for your answers why no one is answering come on okay i have received one answer Two, three. Okay. I am receiving a lot of correct answers. Yes. I think so. Clap was my first thing. Okay. I gave a task, but that's not the answer. So let's see. I have uh, received response from 14 participants. 16, 17. Okay. So fine. So let's start with 20. I have received 20 answers, and let's see what the answer is. And the third one was put your hands on your head. Fine. I hope so. Everyone would have got it. So remember now so by giving you rapid fire instruction i caused your brain to enter a stress state releasing hormones like adrenaline and cortisol to decrease your short term memory in fact the chronic release of stress hormone can impair your cells in past of your brain designed for learning and memory your brain is keeping you safer from harm but it is actually harming you so when you have stress just be calm and focus a better solution is whenever you are stressed move on, move off from the place and drink a little water it will help you so let's move on to the next and final presentation that is habit so in this presentation i have used or spoken about the seven habits of highly effective people by stephen covey these are the seven effective habits of people so first one is independent be proactive begin with the end in mind first put things first whatever happens if you are going to do an activity let that activity be the first one think win win So whenever you're going to do an activity, don't think that oh my God, I'm going to fail. So that is the first hindrance you're doing for yourself. 
just think whatever it is i am giving my participation i'm winning or losing i have to participate in the game and it will lead you to win seek first to understand and then be understood there's a famous quote like put yourself in other shoe you know what first try to listen to someone who's trying to deliver his thoughts or ideas then after that you can impose your thoughts and um, in tamil movie like it was a tamil actor if i say i think so you can remember who it is he, when he was delivering a talk he said that muttal te enikume vandute velaye tatti kudutha dhan vaangano appdin solittu you know what when you agree with someone and when who someone is trying to impose his thoughts on you you should just say okay okay fine i'll try to adapt and just move on next is synergize sharpen the saw and that's the last one which helps you for continuous improvement i like to explain the concept of habit with a short video habits are all about going from being dependent to being self-reliant. Just like I talked about in the 50th law and Ralph Waldo Emerson's essay, one of the greatest virtues a master must develop is independence, working with yourself. First, be proactive. You focus on positive results. You focus on solutions instead of problems. Where unsuccessful people finger point, take no responsibility for their actions and try to always shift the blame on others. You understand things don't always go as planned, but it's how we react to them that defines our character. You hold yourself accountable, even if the problem at hand might not be your fault. This way, you can take a stoic, objective look at what happened, figure it out, and keep it from happening again. If you're stressed by something that is out of your control, like bad weather, you save your energy by not complaining and keeping a calm and peaceful mind about it. If you can actively do something about it, like take control of your nutrition and fitness, focusing on staying healthy through workout, sleep, and meditation, then be proactive and go for it. Second, begin with the end in mind. If you have no goals, you can't strive for them. So if we decide to lose some weight at the gym for example, we know we want to burn a lot of calories until we're about 10 pounds lighter and we keep track of it with a workout plan leading all the way up to achieving that goal. You ever notice how the people with the least ambition seem to have no goals in life? That's not a coincidence. As you need to define your interests and plan all the way to the end as Robert Greenwood states. Three, put first things first. You prioritize what's important and urgent. And you don't work for work's sake or waste time and energy on unimportant tasks as a form of procrastination. The next step is always the most important one. The unsuccessful avoid the work that they should have gotten done weeks ago out of fear of rejection or confrontation. But no matter how unpleasant the task is, if it's essential to getting ahead, you push through it. Also, by not forgetting what's important to us, like family, friends and health, we don't get too caught up in work. You put yourself first because it improves everything you focus on after. Interdependence is just as important as independence, working with others. 4. Think win-win. You understand that the best deals in business and in overall life benefit all parties involved. Not only do you get value out of the equation, but you're given value back. Gary Vaynerchuk, a living legend says, whoever gives value first wins. You're not focusing on what you can get or take. You focus on what you can give and how you can be helpful to others. The rich are generous not because they have a lot of money, but they have a lot of money because they are generous. I think that's a pretty good line right there. Five. Seek first to understand, then to be understood. You emphasize with other people and you understand that you might not always be right. So you keep an open mind and try to see the other person's perspective. By understanding where they're coming from and what concerns they might have, you can communicate with that person more effectively and thus both grow through a constructive argument. When you see something out of the ordinary, you're not quick to judge and put it in a box. Instead, you embrace new ideas and learn throughout the process. 6. Synergize. You seek to share resources and work together because you know you will be stronger, faster and smarter when you help each other out through collaborative teamwork. If we take a look at soccer, we see that every player has a function and their goal is to get the ball into the net. And the only way they can achieve that is by synergizing, by teamwork. So far we've seen that these three habits establish your self-reliance and these three habits develop your social dynamics. The seventh law is more general and influences every part of your life. 7. 
Sharpen the saw is about continuous improvements. Here, the sharpness of the saw symbolizes how effective, how good you really are, and the fact of the matter is that we need to work on ourselves until the day we die. The saw is never sharp enough. I remember one of my teachers asking me, isn't that sad that you never reach a stop sign? And after thinking about her question many times now for years, I can say I stand by the response I gave her. No, I said. There's something beautiful about that. We don't get to see the stop sign because it is not until our last breath that we stop pursuing a better self. In other words, what happens to a flower when it stops growing? It dies. I think we are very similar in that regard. The meaning of life for me, and I'm not alone in this, is fulfilling my true potential. I want to be the greatest man I can be, and I want to encourage others on their path to becoming their best self. This is what Stephen Covey calls the A- so I hope so you'd have uh, gone through the seven habits of highly effective people. So let's go on to the activity. So now I request the participants to go back to meety.com and uh, enter the password 914632. I repeat 914632. So now participants, pay attention. This is the next step to re-alteration of your brain. I need you to put the days of the week in alphabetical order, starting from Friday, pull your answers. So go to the website meety.com and type the password 914632. So you have, you have to arrange or rank the question in alphabetical order. So I have received uh, two answers. Come on participants, just give it a try. You know the days of the week. You just have to reorder it in alphabetical order. Example, the first one will be Friday. Come on, just give it a try. Only two people have logged on. Fine. So I have given you a clue that the first one will be Friday. So it is in alphabetical order. Waiting, waiting, waiting. I'm waiting for more people to be active. Come on, this is a workshop. I need your participation for your answers. Just give it a try. Fine. So when I reach 20 participants, I think so, I'll go on with the answer. I'm still at 19. I want more people to try. Fine. Let's go with the answer. What it is. So the answer is Friday, Monday, Saturday, Sunday, Thursday, Tuesday and Wednesday. How many of you got the right answer? So this is a basic thing I think so. Because every day you go in for the weekdays, like every month, every week. But it may seem a little bit difficult. You know why? Because we have a habit of going regularly, doing things regularly. Fine, let's go in for the second quiz. So go to meety.com 
Name a color and a tool. Any name, any color. This is an open answer question. So you can give in your answers. Name a color and a tool. Color example pink and tool like uh, screws. You have to give two answers, not one. You have to give a color and the tool name together. Come on participants, expecting your answers. Only one has given his answer. Dear participants, you can log on to Meety website, given the same password 914632 and you can put the answers. Name a color and a tool. I'm receiving interesting answers. Okay. Fine. Yes. Okay, I'm receiving a lot of answers. Fine, I hope so you would have understood the question. Name the color and the tool. So let's see what the answer is. Okay, did you just say red hammer? So did I just uh, read your mind or just come close to it? Freak, right? How did I do that? In general categories like colors, tools and furniture and each category has its own level. Example, that it helps in finding what is best needs without even digging in everything you know. The best example of color is red and the best example for tool is a hammer. So you always remember things which are easier, fast than going in for complicated things. So this is our habit. Even I do the same thing. I go in for doing things that are very easy rather than going for difficult tasks. So now let's go on. What does it mean to be enterprising? The description of enterprising person is drawn from what is known about entrepreneurs. The idea being that the enterprising person shares entrepreneurial characteristics just as there are different types of entrepreneurs distinguished by their growth, orientation, motivation, by the type of business they run, involvement with new technology, association with business, owner management and so on. There are different enterprising people. An enterprising tendency is defined as the tendency to start up and manage projects. The most enterprising people set up in projects most frequently set up more innovative projects and are more growth oriented which means that they have to be opportunistic and good at utilizing resources including human technological, physical and organizational resources. So here I've given how an enterprising person is. I would like to give an example for this. So when I was working in an institution, um, there were both theoretical and uh, calculator papers, that is some papers. So what I did was when I took in for uh, theoretical paper, there was a subject called production management. So instead of going the theoretical way, I ask the students to manufacture products. Then whatever it may be, even if it may be a small, I ask them to produce it. I gave them time for one week and they have to come and explain about it. And what happened is uh, around uh, when I gave this project to 60 students, everyone did it. None of the students said, no, I'm not going to do it. And I was surprised when they came back with products that were so innovative and that were usable by a normal consumer. So after that, when I uh, analyzed their growth level, that is, when they were induced into something new, their performance level increased. So this shows that when a person, that a normal person can become enterprising person when he seeks the opportunities and uses the resources, believes that 
he possesses something and can gain the qualities to be successful next we know move on to high need for achievement the enterprising person is highly motivated energetic and has the capacity for hard work there are they may be busy driven dynamic and highly committed to getting things done their high motivation levels are characteristics by a high need for achievement manifesting as the desire to lead shape and complete projects so after this i created a need for the students i go on with the example that i previously said so the students manufacture product i did not leave them there itself i picked up those products which were which can be taken to the next level so which is saleable so when i approached the district industrial center and tidishia i was able to identify and group the students according to their ability and the tasks or uh, the orientation of the products so those kind of products were selected and they were presented to the authorities and then they gave us the need of autonomy that is independence they gave us an opportunity so tell let me tell first what is the need of autonomy the enterprising person is highly motivated energetic like to lead shape and do things in their way they are independent driven dynamic and may have to be number 1 at work solo so now i'm going on to back to the example so first products were created then the opportunity was given and third independence so for these students we uh, presented their products in a uh, government exhibition and uh, it was a weekly presentation like they were able to they were given a uh, uh, a spot to sell the products and uh, it was only on saturdays and sundays and it the it didn't affect their college timings and even their parents they agreed to it so when six students they presented the products they were able to meet the customer directly and make their production saleable and this helped them to develop strong self esteem individualism leadership orientation unconventional optimization optionated and uh, they were able to earn something from that creative tendency so what is creative tendency and how it is useful the enterprising person is restless with ideas and has an imaginative approach to solving problems they tend to see life in a different way to others spotting opportunities around them their innovative tendency and need for achievement helps them to develop idea to create new products and services and system new intellectual property and artistic outputs and new businesses and ventures across sectors so creative tendency so my imagination to bring in uh, the theoretical concept to a practical way help the students create new ideas so this intuition um, being able to synthesize ideas and knowledge helped the students as well as me to identify who were that is um, students are not mainly judged on education that is their marks alone they have other aspects in their life that is the creativity level the versatility what they are in the personal resources for projects and problem solving so all these things help me to identify that those students who did those projects were able to increase the mark level so what they did was they applied in the subject whatever they learned and uh, i was surprised to see that a, a student was getting below 50% or percentage level increase you know how much about 75 i was really surprised over it okay next let us go on to the calculated risk taking so what is calculated uh, risk taking the enterprising person is opportunistic and idealistic goals they wish to pursue this will usually involve 
some risk to them their time finances and personal relationships they seek information and expertise to assess if it is worth pursuing the opportunity they also need to convince their investors and supporters to take a calculated risk so let me go back to the example so what we done is we created the project then we displayed to the authorities then we sold it to the customers and then what we have to do we have to take the risk by helping those students to register and establish a concern that is to establish a business unit those students i think so um, we are in the process of registration and one person has completed the registration so she has taken the risk the government is ready to provide funds and she is ready to produce a product so when they both combine they both taking the risk of getting a product to the next level and hope so that risk was a good one because now she is exporting to sri lanka and malaysia so being decisive or without incomplete information and good judging i wouldn't have been able to do that so when are we going to take a risk just have a self awareness analytical it should be goal oriented and it should have effective information the last one is internal locus of control so what is it internal locus of control it is rather than the external locus of control which means that they believe you have control over your own destiny and make their own luck this means that uh, they confidently seek to extract control over their life draw on inner resources and believe that it is down to them if they succeed through their own efforts and hard work so when a person have uh, internal locus of control he is always opportunistic he seeks opportunities in whatever he does he is self confident proactive determined in expressing strong will and effort to control life self belief which is very important for everyone i hope so this presentation would be an effective one for all of you and i request the participants to get into the assessment link which i'll be posting on the youtube comment section so there you'll be having a self assessment tool like to find the enterprising level of yourself it are those are simple questions which have been already designed by experts and at last you'll be having a analysis a percentage so that you have to convert to pdf and you'll be uploading in the google form and in the second page you'll be having a feedback session so if you have really really impressed about this presentation please give your valuable feedback and thank you for spending your time with me have a good day so i am posting the link uh, on youtube comment section i request the participants to please click on the assessment link and uh, so now i am posting on the link dear participants um, i request you to please please uh, stop the comments <laughs> so that uh, the link will go on to everyone and everyone can uh, post in their feedback and go on for the assessment section thank you i have already given uh, the link please take the self assessment uh, through google form so in google form you will be having uh, details example i'll just uh, show you how it is so in this uh, personality test there is a part called self assessment check i've given the link here so when you uh, click the link it will automatically direct you to this polling section
So in here, first you have to fill in these details. This is only about you and not uh, about anyone else. So please be true in whatever you are answering. And final, final question, you just have to click how enterprising am I? So when you submit the answer and when you click this link, you'll get a PDF and uh, then you have to answer these questions. First, you have to upload the PDF file. Then you'll be answering how many percentage you have got from the test. You'll just mentioning, you'll be mentioning here. And after that, you'll be having a assessment page. So since I have not filled in, it's not going. Second will be the uh, feedback page and you have to submit the feedback. Thank you so much for your cooperation and I hope so. This presentation will make some kind of personality development in your career. Thank you. Participants, I think so better I'll uh, send you all the link through email. So I, I will request the organizers to send the link to email. So please spend your valuable time in posting your answers for this assessment. I request the audience to please stop uh, commenting and uh, help others in getting the link, please. Thank you. Thank you for your understanding. section now I request the participants please 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 hold on your comments so that others can get the link Participants, I also request you to subscribe my page so that it will also be helpful for me. Participants? So now I hand over the session to the uh, organizers. Charger, 
So, dear participants, uh, I have sent the link in the YouTube page. Good afternoon all. Thank you for being participated in this program. So be positive for and be positive. Uh, please respond to the program. After completing a response, you will be receive your certificate within uh, May 30th. Now hand over section to Jodhisar. Sir, what is it? I think this program will be very useful in this uh, COVID-19 period. Good morning to all. This is Dr. Kumar, Head of Department of Commerce, National College Tichy. I welcome one and all. It's a very good session indeed. We enjoyed it thoroughly. Thanks for the guest. And I welcome one and all to this August occasion. I have received a very good feedback right now. And moreover, the exercise given by the speaker is excellent. I request all of you to give a feedback so that we can proceed further. And over to guests. So, okay, participants, uh, now I have sent you the assessment link. Please. Uh, Please go on to the assessment and uh, fill in the first page. In the second page, you'll be having the feedback section, and there you can give your valuable feedbacks. I, I hope so. Everyone would have uh, gained something from this presentation. Thank you. Let me thank Dr. Chandra, who is the organizing secretary of this webinar, and all our staff members of Department of Commerce. Aided and self and staff members, those who have contributed throughout the day, today and yesterday. We are very delighted and happy, and thanks to everybody. Over to the guest. Participants, I hope so you'll be uh, playing the assessment form.
So if you have any questions regarding the presentation, you can post it. So, dear participants, I'm posting the uh, link. Thank you for your, all your valuable feedback. So, those who are not able to access the link from the comment section, those participants can uh, email send sorry those participants can send email to the organizers so that they'll send you the feedback link Some fields are not accessible. Actually, if you give in the details, it is accessible, and for percentage, it is only numbers, you cannot give in words. I'm sharing my screen so that you can have uh, an outlook like how you can do it. So, here you have to upload the file, you'll be clicking add file and uh, uploading the PDF. After which you'll be giving the percentage value in numbers. After giving the percentage, uh, you will answer this question. You can give multiple choice for your answers. And then click next for the feedback part. page so when you click next you'll be going to the feedback link I just need your email address 
name of your sorry name as on certificate and your type of participant okay i'll, I'll just check over Sorry for the inconvenience, dear participants. Uh, even though if you have not entered your mobile number and uh, college name, it's not an issue. We'll check it uh, over your mail ID. I have sent the link again. Just uh, click it. Sorry for the inconvenience. I have sent you the new link. So now I hand over the session to to our principal sir.
thank you dear participants and uh, i have sent you the new assessment link so where you can enter your mobile number and uh, college name even if you have not entered it's not an issue uh, we will uh, go through your name and email id so that is a thing that is required for uh, giving you the certificate thanks for your registration and uh, hope to meet you soon uh, and before i leave i request the participants to please please subscribe my channel and uh, help me out thanks for your uh, valuable feedbacks in the comment section and i am really overwhelmed by your response thank you all participants